everyone, Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, September 22nd, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Tesla co-founder J.B. Straubel's battery recycling company Redwood Materials has signed a deal with BMW of North America. Together, the pair intend to recycle lithium-ion batteries from all electrified vehicles from BMW Group brands, including BMW, Mini, Rolls-Royce, and BMW Motorrad. Redwood will work directly with BMW Group's extensive network of over 700 locations, including dealerships, distribution centers, and internal facilities to facilitate the recovery of end-of-life lithium-ion batteries. Redwood Materials is currently operating out of their Reno, Nevada facility for their recycling and manufacturing programs, but they're actively building a facility in Charleston, South Carolina to process more. BMW's largest manufacturing facility in the world is located 200 miles away in Spartanburg, South Carolina. BMW is currently building another facility about 10 miles from Redwood in Woodruff, South Carolina. BMW North America's battery cell manufacturing partner, AESC, is also located in South Carolina. Previously announced Redwood partnerships include GM's Ultium Cells, Volkswagen Group, Ford, Volvo, Tesla's long-term battery partner Panasonic, and Toyota. Redwood is ramping up towards the goal of processing 100 gigawatt hours of battery materials annually. This year's target is 15 gigawatt hours. Geely-backed Lotus Cars has unveiled a new concept car called Theory One, which is designed to act as the foundation of all future Lotus vehicles. The three-seater sports car has a central driving position and room for a passenger on each side, much like the original McLaren F1 road car. The company claims this will theoretically, see what I did there, deliver up to 986 horsepower, a top speed of 198 miles per hour and zero to 62 miles per hour in under 2.5 seconds. Lotus says the all-wheel drive powertrain and 70 kilowatt hour battery should be able to deliver up to 250 miles of range on Europe's WLTP test cycle. Theory 1 features a steer-by-wire system, which means the steering wheel and communication to the wheels is done electronically, like modern aircraft and Tesla's Cybertruck. Lotus has a history of being known for lightweightness. The chassis is made of recycled carbon fiber, and the body materials are a combination of cellulose composite and polycarbonate panels. Combined with other design choices, the target weight is under 3,500 pounds, which is in line with Lotus's founder's famous directive, simplify, then add lightness. Structurally, Lotus says the vehicle has no need for a subframe because it has been designed to use its motor and battery assembly as a stressed member to take the forces directly from the suspension. One interesting innovation called Lotusware is also being incorporated for the first time. Inflatable pods and haptic feedback devices in the steering wheel and seating are activated by NVIDIA's Drive Compute platform to prompt or inform the driver in real time. Theory One includes a 360 degree autonomous driving sensor suite of four deployable LIDARs, six high definition cameras, a combination of long and short range millimeter radars, and ultrasonic radars. The company says this system can scan for obstacles at a radius of up to 200 meters around the car in every direction, even in low light or inclement weather. They claim it's level four capable, which designates operation without a human driver in most situations. Lotus emphasized that the Theory 1 is not planned for production, but serves as a blueprint for their future models. They offered no further details on when or how the platform will be realized. In 2023, Lotus had its best sales year on record, with 6,970 vehicles delivered. 63% of those were all electric models. Each was manufactured in Wuhan, China, and are subject to significant tariffs, which have recently gone into effect in the US, Canada, and Europe. Do you think Lotus can make a comeback as they advance their electrification programs? General Motors has announced that their vehicles are now officially able to utilize Tesla's supercharging network. The brand says more than 17,800 Tesla superchargers are now available to use with a GM-approved North American Charging Standard Direct Current Adapter, which can be purchased for $225 via the GM Owners app. Users will need to log into their app to activate supercharger access. The app will also allow users to find stations, initiate, and pay for charging sessions as well. GM says they plan on leveraging multiple suppliers to produce approved NAX DC adapters. Availability for Canadian customers will come later this year. 
As an aside, this week, Google published a beta update for Google Maps on Android Auto, which enables an EV charging station filter for non-Tesla NACS-supported locations. Although GM failed to meet their own EV production goals, it seems they are full speed ahead on charging. Their active investment with charging networks including EVgo and IANA placed them high in the ranks of U.S. automakers working to offer a comprehensive charging experience for their customers. What do you think? Chinese battery giant CATL announced and showcased some new battery products at the IAA Mobility Exposition in Germany this week. Under their new commercial vehicle battery brand, Tektrons, two new cell-to-pack T batteries specifically designed for heavy-duty trucking were unveiled a long life edition, and a super fast charging edition. Both offered a maximum stated range of 310 miles. The T long life edition is said to have a lifespan of 1.7 million miles in 15 years. The design supports CATL's battery swapping solution. The T super fast charging edition can refill the battery to 70% state of charge in 15 minutes. The battery capacity can range between 200 and 600 kilowatt hours. The lifespan is shorter with an expected 750,000 miles in eight years. The week prior to IAA, CATL had released details of their Tektron's B-series LFP batteries designed for electric buses that have an energy density of 175 watt hours per kilogram, which they claim is the best in the bus industry. They're also IP69 waterproof and can be submerged for up to 72 hours. Tektron's B batteries are expected to have a lifespan of 15 years and 930,000 miles and will have a warranty of 10 years or 620,000 miles. The company said mass production for the B series will start soon and they plan to deploy them across 80 different bus models. Lifespan longevity and fast charging are two main points for commercial fleet buyers. Products like these will enable EV adoption for many new applications worldwide. Speaking of trucking, on our side of the pond, Bollinger Motors has announced the commencement of production for their Class 4 commercial truck, the B4. Back in 2020, one of my first videos featured an interview with founder Robert Bollinger, a headquarters tour, and exploration of the company's B1 and B2 electric utility vehicles. In 2023, shortly after Mullen Automotive acquired Bollinger, I spent time on track with Mullen's offerings. I'll link to each of those videos in the description if you'd like to catch up on the backstory. The 2025 Bollinger B4 has an 800 volt architecture with a dual battery 158 kilowatt hour Aries LFP pack sourced from Michigan's R Next Energy with a maximum range of 185 miles. It supports level two charging speeds of 19.2 kilowatts, enabling a full charge in about nine hours. It also supports DC fast charging speeds of 110 kilowatts, enabling a two hour charge. The 16 to 18 foot vehicle can support a gross vehicle weight rating of 15,500 pounds and a payload of 7,325 pounds. Manufacturing is being done by Rausch in Livonia, Michigan. The MSRP is listed at $158,758, but Bollinger says buyers can receive up to $40,000 in federal tax credits. They also meet California's hybrid and zero emission truck and bus voucher rebate requirements for up to $60,000 in incentives. If Bollinger can sell enough of these, do you think they might get themselves into a position to produce the B1 or B2? I know many of you also follow our other channels at Misco Electric Industry and at Misco Electric Ride Reviews. We've been publishing to those channels regularly and this week I shared a detailed review of a high-tech city e-bike called the Ertopia Carbon One Pro. It has voice recognition, 4G connectivity, an onboard GPS, fingerprint reader, and the most full-featured app I've seen from any manufacturer. As always, I dug into the opportunities for improvement as well. I hope you'll check that out and subscribe to the Ride Reviews channel for some more very cool coverage coming in two weeks. Well, that's all for today's episode. If you found value in The Current, I hope you'll consider sharing a link to this episode online. You can also join me on other social media platforms like X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up to the minute insights and exclusive coverage. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.